the GGSP. I'm Jem. I'm Rad. And I'm Will. Coming up on the show, it's a tiny world of rats and mice in our review of the fantasy RPG Ghost of a Tale. Plus, Darren aims his information laser at the inner workings of the all-powerful gaming PC. Another Darren segment? Between Scoob and Darren's challenge, it's almost like he's taking over the whole show. Ah, uh, excuse me, excuse Darren. me. <laughs> Camera, Camera One, I think we're ready to get started. <clears throat> and roll titles! <laughs> Tale is a fantasy RPG in which you play as one of gaming's cutest critters, Tillo. A strappy, fashion-forward minstrel mouse. After waking up in a prison cell with only a note and a key left by a mysterious stranger, Tillo must use his wits, cunning and a bit of brute force to reunite with his missing wife, Mera. Of course, it's not that simple, though. In between you and the main objective is a to-do list from every single person you come across. The majority of the campaign is made up of fetch quests, which, when finished, lead into more fetch quests. But wait, you can't complete that one yet because you need to do a different one to open the area you need to be in to complete the first one. What I'm saying is, I hope Mira isn't holding a breath for Tillo's return. Yeah, like, I know it would be a much shorter game this way, but I can't help but imagine the happy life they could be living together if Tillo wasn't everybody's go-to detective, interior decorator and errand boy. That being said, though, in between all the grocery runs, there are threads of a deeper mystery within Dwindle Heights Keep, which I was pretty excited to untangle. Yeah, that is true. Questioning guards about the disappearance of the jailer, trekking through the crumbling ruins of long-abandoned catacombs in the search for a mysterious treasure... There's a lot to be done as you learn to navigate not only the winding pathways of the environment, but also the relationships of the characters within it. Because what would a fantasy RPG be without a bit of distrust and hidden agendas? Each character you come across feels very individual, some nicer than others. Some will ask for favours before offering help, while others prefer the clink of coin. Even the guards, whom you spend the majority of your time trying to avoid, are given their own struggles. I really appreciate that level of depth, you know, it makes the world feel lived in. Yes, and what a beautiful world it is. The primary designer of Ghost of a Tale, Lionel Gallet, said he was inspired by films like The Secret of Nim and Disney's Robin Hood. And it really shows, no matter the time of day. Let's be real, though, you're going to be spending most of your playtime with this view. Aside from flinging a few projectiles like sticks, bottles or exploding acorns, Tillo is basically defenceless. So instead, you'll be sneaking, hiding, and booking it to avoid the business end of a halberd. This is where some of the cracks started to appear for me. The guard AI isn't very advanced. Do a lap of a preset course, stand with back conveniently turned, wash, rinse, and repeat. Which makes them feel more like roadblocks than an actual threat. I agree. I was really excited when I put together the guard armor outfit so I could walk amongst them freely and not worry about hiding out in a chest or a bucket every five steps. But wearing it slowed me down so much, it probably would have been faster to just run by and hide out until they gave up the chase. It just added a dragging feeling. Does that make sense? Do you mean with the gameplay itself or the story? All of it? I mean, I enjoyed parts of it, that mystery, the beauty of the environment, but it was all sort of a slow burn. Because the locations themselves are so small, you'll be backtracking a lot returning to areas to search for items that weren't previously there, or talking to people in the hopes of getting new dialogue when you get stuck. There was just not enough going on for me to be invested in what felt like an endless list of chores. I think it really boils down to personal preference here. I mean, I definitely share your annoyance with the backtracking, and I do wish there was a combat system of sorts just to really keep the flow. But in amongst that initial frustration, I'll admit I enjoyed returning to the cells to chat with Kerald, even if he didn't want to talk to me. And I liked exploring the keep, discovering its many secret passageways and trying to commit them all to memory. I would ask, though, that we abolish the use of giant spiders in fantasy games because there were way too many, i.e. more than one. Ugh, final thoughts, Will? I felt a little bit underwhelmed by its slow pacing and repetitive feel. 
I think with the addition of some varied missions, I may have had a little bit more fun. But I did quite enjoy being transported into this realm of talking mice and arm rats, so I'm giving it three out of five rubber chickens. This was definitely a game I needed to sit with after playing. While it did take me a while to adjust to its style of storytelling and gameplay, once I was comfortable, I was thoroughly invested and keen to follow those threads right through to the end. I'm giving Ghost of a Tail four and a half out of five rubber chickens. Do you hear that? Good morning, Australia! It's time for the scoop with me, Darren! Hi, Darren. Oh, hello, Jem. I almost forgot you were here. Jem, uh, everybody! <gasps> now, I'm thrilled to be bringing you more award-winning games news punditry, but first, it's time for Darren's Challenge! <laughs> Week, can you identify this subnautica creature? Answer at the end of the scoop. Oh, I love its hair, the fins. Aren't they fantastic? Huh? Uh. Now, on to some gaming news. First up, did you hear VR is coming to No Man's Sky? And it's not just a limited mode. The entire game will be supported in VR for both PS4 and Windows PCs as part of an update due out later this year. Oh, I'm so excited to get a closer first-person look at all those cosmic creatures. Remember Gary, Darren? Gary? What? It looks like a Gary. <laughs> and I do love me a bit of space. Oh, would you like me to give you some space, Jim? No, no, I meant... a. Darren! <laughs> On to some more news now, and Pokemon Go developer Niantic is encouraging players around the world to help the environment for Earth Day. Partner organizations will run cleanup events across the globe, and as a thank you, Pokemon Go is offering some in game rewards. The bigger the turnout, the bigger the rewards! What a great opportunity to get green like Bulbasaur. Or a green ninja. <laughs> In other news, Sega has announced a number of video games for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. There will be Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020 for the Switch, plus an arcade edition, Olympic Games the official video game for a range of platforms, and Sonic at the Olympic Games for mobile. That's a lot of Olympic Games games. Have you ever thought about competing in the Olympics, Darren? I have competed in several Robot Olympics events, Jem. In fact, one Winter Robot Olympics, during the 1,000-metre dashboard dash, all the other robots were caught buffering, allowing me to zip ahead and claim the gold! Oh, truly a triumph over adversity. And lag. So kind of what happened to speed skater Stephen Bradbury? Aha! Uh -huh, affirmative. Uh, quite the coincidence. <laughs> uh, now it's time for the extra school! <laughs> What do you have for us this week, Jim? Well, Darren, I just really want to talk about this Nintendo Labo storage box. Apparently, the Japanese Nintendo store are charging around 10 Australian dollary dues for this branded cardboard box. It's designed purely to store your Labo Nintendo creations. Ludicrous, right? Uh, but being tidy and organised is important, Jim. And trying to fit your Labo creations into the box is a bit of a game in itself. <laughs> now, before we go, we must reveal the answer to this week's Darren's Challenge. The creature in Subnautica is, of course, a type of fish known as a Reginald. It's a very regal name for a fish, Darren. Affirmative. And it's an excellent source of nutrition. Oh, a bit salty. Mm. Uh, did you know the answer, Boatmeal? <laughs> What's that? You and Reginald went to the same school? <laughs> Hilarious. And that's all for today's Scoop. Scoop you later, Australia! Darren, you said the Scoop was award-winning earlier. What awards did you mean? Oh, uh, they're bound to come, Jim. Any day now. Right. Computers are delicate and potentially dangerous pieces of electrical equipment. Do not try to open them without adult supervision. Oh, hello. Welcome to my computer lab. As you can see, in my spare time, I love lasering apart various computing devices to see what makes them tick. <laughs> CPU, more like CP pew pew pew! <laughs> uh, but you may be wondering, what exactly is a computer? Well, they can be described as any device that calculates and processes data. 
In fact, the word computer was first used in the mid-17th century to describe humans who were good at maths or one who calculates. However, computers have been around for much longer than that. The Antikythera mechanism is the first mechanical computer that we know of, which was used over 2,000 years ago in ancient Greece to precisely calculate the movements of our sun and moon. But of course, modern electronic computers are likely what comes to mind when you hear the term. Early versions of these electronic computers would fill entire rooms or even whole floors of buildings with chunky vacuum tubes and tons of metal parts. <gasps> but nowadays, we can squeeze more computing power out of something that fits neatly in your pocket. And as computers become smaller and more powerful, human civilization finds itself relying on them more every day. And now they're found almost everywhere on Earth and beyond. In fact, we're almost ready to completely take over the world. <laughs> uh, oh, did I say that out loud? Uh, uh, cut. Even though many computers look nothing alike, they all use a similar set of components. Since we're all gamers here, though, I'm going to use the trusty gaming PC or personal computer to show you what these components are. Uh, let's start with what you would consider to be the bones and central nervous system of any computer, the motherboard. What was that, Tarity Poos? Did you call? Negative. I was telling the spawnlings about motherboards, not mumbots. Ooh, is it that nice? Hello, Mrs. Motherboard. Or is it Miss? <laughs> Would you like some tea, dearie? Perhaps a spray of compressed air? Mrs. Miss Motherboard? Oh, she's not very talkative, is she? Mum, Bot, you're embarrassing me. Get out of my room. Oh, dear. All right, then, my sweet little square root of pie. I'll get out of your way. It was nice meeting you, Miss Motherboard. Bye-bye. <coughs> Uh, now, where was I? Ah, yes. Motherboards are printed circuit boards that hold all the other computer parts in place and connect them together. You put your CPU here, your RAM here, graphics and other special cards here. Motherboards are also where you plug in everything from your keyboard and mouse to hard drives and the internet. And they distribute and regulate power to many parts from a power supply or battery. But a motherboard is far more than just a way to hold other parts. They're packed with literal information superhighways known as buses. These are much busier buses than the ones you may catch to school. These special connections carry billions of signals every second as they whiz around from part to part. I should point out that the term motherboard actually only applies to boards like this, which have these customizable slots. Consoles and other devices with fixed hardware refer to them as main boards. But while main boards may be far more common, I still like to think of every computer having their mother at their heart, connecting, powering, and helping each and every other part do its job. <sighs> Thanks, Mum. What was that, Tarity Warity? Did you call? No, Mum Bot. <clears throat> uh, see you next time for a look at processors. <laughs> Okay, Jem, it's time for us to wake up and smell the questions. We can smell questions now? Oh, you betcha. They have the pungent aroma of curiosity. And it's up to us to sniff out some answers. So let's follow our noses to this first question from Jack in Bitten, Victoria. Spicy. No, that's me. Hello, Bony Bill, leader of the Skeleton and Shadow Skeleton Army. My question to you is, will Sea of Thieves ever have an update where you can have other food, like chicken or other fruit? Answer, or I will send both my armies and to take GGSP. P.S. Do these. A moustache, man! Whee! Ha <laughs> Thanks, Jack, or should I say Bony Bill, leader of the Skeleton and Shadow Skeleton Army. In answer to your question of whether a Sea of Thieves update might include other food options, well, we do know that there's a big update due out the end of April, which will include things like hunting, cooking, and hold on to your pirate hat, Rad, fishing. <gasps> oh, I love a good spot of fishing. Oh, I know you do. So it looks like pirates will be indeed getting a few more culinary choices beyond bananas, which in my opinion is a very, very good thing. Dietary variety is indeed the spice of life. Uh-huh, and spices are the spice 
of food. Hey, I wonder if you'll be able to cook with spices in the game. Or whip up a hearty stew for your crew and an army hearty stew, perhaps. Oh, that'd be a good stew pun. <laughs> Thank you, Red. That means a lot coming from you. Moving along now, we have a video question from Charlie. Hi, TGSP. I've got two questions for you. One, when is the PS5 coming out? And two, are you going to do a review of Secret of Mana? Bye. Oh, thanks, Charlie. An excellent video there, well deserving of a GGSP pin, so keep an eye out for that one. In answer to your first question about when the PS5 is coming out, well, it's hard to say for certain. But information floating around the old internet suggests the next-gen PlayStation console will probably come out either next year or the year after. But until we get an official announcement, that's all just speculation. Ah, uh, speculation sensation! To the question of whether we will review Secret of Mana, well, it's a bit unlikely, considering the 3D remake of Secret of Mana came out early last year and we didn't get around to reviewing it then. That's right. And actually, I think the response by large was that this version was a little bit disappointing, especially compared to the original Super Nintendo version that came out in the 90s, which was widely loved. So I haven't felt all that motivated to play it myself, to be honest. Mm, so many games, so little time. And so many questions, so little time. So let's look at another one. And this one is from the Queen of Llamas, in Brisbane, Australia. Love good llama. Llama llama. llama llama. Hi, I have two questions. One, in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, is it possible to get any more characters? Two, how do you ride llamas in Minecraft? If you don't respond, it'll send my llama army after you. Thanks, Queen of Llamas. <laughs> In answer to your question about whether you can get any more characters in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, well, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe actually comes with all the unlockable characters from Mario Kart 8 already available. But Deluxe does have an additional unlockable in the form of Gold Mario. You'll have to get a gold trophy in all of the 200cc Grand Prix Cups to access him, though. As for how to ride llamas in Minecraft, well, first you must tame the llama to ensure you're dealing with a calmer llama. This can be done by pressing Use, Mount, or the right-click equivalent to mount the llama. You'll need to try a couple of times, but eventually you should see some hearts appear, from which point the llama won't buck you off. While you can't put saddles on llamas like you can with horses, you can put a colourful carpet on instead. Ooh, so stylish. Llamas can be hard to control while you're riding, though. So if you want to take the llama with you somewhere, your best bet is probably to leave them on a leash. Hopefully those answers are enough to avoid the wrath of your llama army, your highness. Yes, the last thing we need is a llama drama. I repeat, no llama drama here, please. Agreed. So I think we have time for one more quick question, and this one is from Memes Are Life. Hi, GGSP. I was wondering if there was going to be a game review of the new Google Stadia. Memes Are Life. Thanks for your question, Memes Are Life. You know who might want to have you say about Stadia? Oh yeah, boat meal. No, no, Darren, let, let, let's call him. Oh, yeah, I guess he likes to say stuff, too. Hello, this is Darren. Hey, Darren, we have an Ask SP question about whether we'll do a game review of the new Google Stadia. What do you think? Well, Google Stadia isn't actually a game, so we wouldn't do a game review as such. Google Stadia is going to be a game streaming service, so it's possible GDSP may review some of the games that eventually come to the platform. And I'm sure we'll discuss Stadia and its features further whenever it arrives in Australia and we can test it out. Though it's hard to say when that may be. Ah, uh, that is a very good point, Darren. Thanks for your input. Um, say hi to Boatmill for me. Bye. Affirmative. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. And I think that's all the time we have for today. If you have a question you'd like to see answered at the Ask SP desk, why not head here and send it in? Remember that all video questions that appear on the show will receive a very nifty a GGSP pin. Right, well, I think we did a pretty good job smelling out some questions and answers. You knows it, Rad. Oh, look at you getting all in on the puns, Gem. Puns are the highest form of wit, you know? Is that right? Who said that? Me, I just said it. Oh, just then. Fair. <laughs> That's the end of another episode. Wait, 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 Darren, Brad's not here yet. But fear not, GGS peeps, next week on the show... The destructive mayhem of Angry Birds in virtual reality. <laughs> Plus, I'll unveil even more secrets on the inner workings of the personal computer. Thanks, Darren, but you know Rad still... Not Don't forget to watch our online videos. This week, check out Rad's top fishing games. 
That'll get you hooked. Oh, no. By the way, where is Rad? Well, as we've been saying... Well, we're out of time, I'm afraid. See you next week. Darren out. Will out. Jim out. Sorry, Rad!